Hello everybody. In this video, I'm going to be teaching you guys how to use cube rotations to your advantage. Okay, so basically what you're doing is you're using them to your advantage during the F2L stage. Basically what you are trying to do is when you get an F2L pair that needs a cube rotation, what you're trying to do is you're trying to use the cube rotation in the best way, okay? And what I mean by that is I could go this way or I could go this way, okay? And you want to choose the right way so that it works to your advantage. The reasoning behind this is because we want to keep our field of view open so that we can find the pieces, okay? With the two solve slots in the front and we can't see the back very well, it'll be very hard. We'd have to like glimpse over or cube rotate, which would be very bad, okay? So essentially what we're going to be doing is we are going to be doing a certain cube rotation. So we're cube rotating in the right way so that we can use it to our advantage. This will basically eliminate all this solve slots and put them in the back so that way the unsolved slots are on the front where you can see them and work on solving them. Okay, so the first set of cases is where this is our very first slot that's being solved, okay? So if we get a case here and it requires a cube rotation, we're going to want to put it in the back, okay? Now when the slot right now is in the front, what we got to do is we got to cube rotate it so that it's in the slot behind it like this, so that way you insert it like that, okay? And if it's already in the back but requires a cube rotation right here, you're going to want to move it to the other slot that's in a, the back, keeping it in the back. The second slot is the most critical slot out there that you will need to know how to do properly so that you can keep the two slots in the back solved, okay? So be, this is very critical because it'll help you decide how you, the other slots are going to go, okay? Because you could have it adjacent to the slot or across from the slot, and it really matters from this slot, okay? So basically what you want to do is, just like the last one, if it's in the front and it requires a cube rotation, you're going to want to move the slot to the back, okay? Just to the slot behind it and solve it there. And if you already have it in the back, just like the last one, you're going to want to move it to the back, if you're inserting it in the slot across from the other one, you can pretty much go any way that you want, okay? So if it's like this, I could go this way or this way. When it comes to the third slot, it's going to be a little bit different than the other ones. When they are adjacent to each other, there's a lot of different ways they can come up that require different things. If the two slots that are solved are in the very front and the slot that you're solving requires a cube rotation, what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to put that slot so that it is still in the back. So basically the slot in the back that's adjacent to it and then you insert it. If the two slots that are solved are in the back, what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to take the slot that it's going into and you're going to want to put that one in the back with those, okay, and then you want to insert it. If the two slots that are solved are on the side, what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to cube rotate in a way so that those two slots are in the back, okay? And then you want to insert the slot that you're solving. When the two solved slots are across from each other, both concepts are very similar to each other. So basically for both of them, what we're going to be doing is the slot that you're solving is always going to be in the back. So if it appears in the front in any spot, you just want to cube rotate it so that it becomes a slot in the back, okay? And if it's already in the back, you're then going to want to rotate it so that it's still in the back. When it comes to the very last slot, if you have to do a cube rotation, you can do it in any way that you want to insert it. On any cases where I said that you can cube rotate it in any way to keep it in the back, um, you can actually do another thing that will also help you, okay? So, what you want to do is you want to keep the slot on the right side, which will make your finger tricks a little bit easier. Doing some of the algorithms on the left side will, might be a little bit harder. So, this algorithm is a bit harder and a little slower doing it on the right side. But when you do it on the other side, it goes in faster. Now, you guys might be faster on the left side for certain algorithms. So, for all the algorithms for F2L where both pieces are in the top layer, you really have to experiment and figure out which way is faster to do it um, when it's on the right or on the left. So keep that in mind and maybe write them down and then you know which way to cube rotate when you get it. If the slot that you're going into is on the correct side but needs a cube rotation, you just want to cube rotate that one to the back and insert it. If it's on the wrong side, however, in any way, you want to cube rotate it to the slot right next to it that's on the other side. So if it's in the back, it'll be in the back, and also if it's the f in the front, it'll still be in the front. 
So if you do these cube rotations in the correct way, it'll really help you to look ahead because all the pieces are in plain view for your eyes to see because now you don't have to cube rotate or look at the back of the cube. So hope this video was helpful for you guys. Let me know what you guys think and let me know if you want to see more videos on this. And thank you guys for watching and I'll see you guys on my next video.